The mallard is probably the best-known duck species in Europe and possibly worldwide. Around 20,000 breeding pairs can be found in Switzerland. They are quite undemanding and adapt well to different lifestyles. It breeds wherever it is reasonably undisturbed, so ground nests are just as suitable as a nest on a roof terrace. The drake, as the male mallard is called, weighs around 900 grams and the duck, that is the female, around 1,100 grams. The duck in this picture is less colorful than the drake. Good camouflage is important for successful breeding. Mallards eat almost anything that can be digested. Water plants, snails, worms, and grasses are preferred. And this lady here has marched into the neighboring forest and is eating acorns. All waterfowl spend a lot of time grooming their plumage. Greasing the feathers is particularly important. Greasing prevents water from penetrating the down. Grease is known to repel water. Air is trapped between the fine down and body heat is retained. Incidentally, many of our down comforters are also made from duck down. If we are cold in winter, all we have to do is fluff up the comforter to loosen the down. This makes them airy and also retains our body heat. The mallard mating season, that is the courtship for a female, begins in the fall. Many pairs form in September and October and stay together until spring. There are almost always more drakes than females. It is assumed that some females fall victim to their predators, foxes, martens, and birds of prey, while breeding. This pair of ducks is being harassed by another drake. He wants to conquer the female afterwards. But as you can see, in this case, the drake is gently driven away. The male is always chattering. He says to the female, we belong together, stay by my side, we belong together, the lady doesn't care. Maybe a little bridal gift will help, who knows. The drake has found a piece of stale bread and gives it to the lady of his heart. The bread is hard. The lady takes the bread, soaks it in water, and washes it. The drake would have liked the bread too, but only if it promotes love. The lady has acquired a taste for it. Where there was a piece of bread, there should be more. She looks, and indeed. These two have found each other. Now they are waiting for better weather together to start building their nest. The drake helps build the nest. The female then broods alone. 
the drake would draw attention to the nest with its conspicuous plumage and reveal the location to predators. The brood is in full swing. Four of the young have already hatched, and the fifth is still being incubated. The brood is complete after approx 25 to 28 days. Meanwhile, the drakes have landed on the small pond and have formed a small molting group, a bachelor group. During the molt, they lose their old feathers and then gain new ones. During this time, they are sometimes no longer able to fly. Mallards are dabbling ducks. This means that they forage for food, sometimes on the bottom of the pond or lake. All five young have hatched, and now it's time for the young to get into the water for the first time. The first trip does not take very long, and the duck stays close to the shore with its young. Here they can forage for food from the water for the first time and familiarize themselves with the element. What we see here is something very rare. The drake has not forgotten the duck. He comes to visit the little family on their first outing. The duck has greeted her husband with a quack and the drake has responded. So the first outing is already over. The mother has to return to land with the young. The young are not yet so well greased. There is therefore a risk that they will get wet, that the down will become soaked with water. This could result in the young becoming hypothermic or no longer being able to swim and drowning. So the first outing should be kept short. The mother takes the young back ashore and make sure that they dry and regrease themselves. The next day is the next outing. 
They look for calm water and stay close to the shore. But, and this is also important, you have to be able to cope in fast-flowing water. The mother and father have taken them to the edge of the river to show them where to swim in weak currents. And now, bang! The boys follow the wrong drake. They swim after him and immediately enter the strong current. They are carried away. But the mommy is already there and leads them back to the shore and into calm water. And as you can see, the real dad is there too. He also supervises and helps guide the young back up into calm waters. The mommy is very attentive, the boy here less so. The one who wanted to surface has frightened the other. So the mommy calls and chatter and tells the boys to stay together. Don't waddle off. We're going ashore here and then down the river in the strong current. Except for this little one. He wasn't paying attention. He found the food very interesting. There was a lot to see and pick up. This is so exciting. Where have the others gone? Where are they? Mommy, mommy, mommy. Oh dear, the mommy and the other children are down the river in the other direction. The little one is all alone. He calls out and looks for mommy. He looks in the wrong places and gets very scared. The 
mommy came flying up. The current was too strong. The mommy couldn't swim up. She had to fly. Amazing. How could the duck know that one of its young was missing? Can she count to five or even sixteen? In order to start searching, it had to know that one of its young was missing. And the other question is, the duck, the mommy, had to think about where I last had all five young and where did one of them get lost. She had to imagine the place in order to fly back there. She had to know how many babies she had to look for and where. A great achievement for such a small duck brain. Does a duck have self-awareness? Does it know the difference between life and death? Is it okay to torture, frighten, or kill animals that have self-awareness? These are just some of the important questions we asked ourselves. Now the little one gets to hear something. Because the mommy was chattering so loudly and excitedly, the drakes from the bachelor community joined in. The drakes suspected that a predator was threatening the young and wanted to help the mommy immediately. They all cackled loudly and violently, and the little one, who was so scared himself, was now being scolded by everyone. Everyone was scared, but they helped each other in times of need. The little one still has to learn something. Mommy orders him to go ashore here. He got lost here. Now he has to learn where the whole family left the little pond, where he lost his connection. The current is really strong here. Finally, here's a lady duck on the pond that we always visit. She had 11 young to look after. Mallards can have up to 16 young. A very nice picture with this little family. That concludes this documentation of the mallards. Soon we will show you the story of the great crested grebes and the coots. If you enjoyed it, we'd be delighted if you subscribed and gave us a thumbs up. Thank you very much.